Welcome to a new edition of the famous interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with singer, songwriter, entrepreneur, and author Sequoia Blue. She opened up about her life and journey to being a singer and songwriter. She is also in the tech world and has the Blue Alchemist podcast. She has consistently followed her dreams and she is excited about the future and getting busy on the projects in her life. Enjoy this interview. Well, thank you for taking a minute out. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> My, yeah, absolutely. So before we get into what you do, and you, you, you seem very busy and you have a really good musical background, I want to know, how did COVID affect you? How did it change the way that you lived your life or viewed the world? And just kind of how did that, how did that work for you this last two years? Oh, man, good question. <laughs> well, it definitely put things more in perspective. Around the time that COVID hit, I was living in Los Angeles downtown, and um, I was by myself. My my stepdad had passed away. Well, my stepdad passed away right before um, COVID was known on the news. You know, we know COVID came around, you know, right before then. So he passed away, and we, my, my mom felt like he passed away from COVID. So we were, it just was a stressful time, and it didn't make me very creative. I was working at a job I didn't really like. I was getting paid well, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. And then um, I had my recording studio at home, and I just didn't have any fire to record like that. I was just, I was just great grieving and just trying to understand the world that time. I was putting things in perspective, because right before my stepdad passed away, my grandma passed away. And we also believe that was from COVID. So it it was a hard two years for me. And then, you know, I didn't know if I was going to stay in L.A. And, and, you know, and stay in my apartment, do my own thing, or go to Vegas. Or actually, it was Georgia first. So go stay with my mom um, to try to get over the whole grieving situation. So I ended up packing up everything, going to Georgia. And everything was just at halt with my music and everything because I was just so stressed out from everything that was going on. And I was still had my apartment in LA, so I was with her. And then we decided to move to uh, Vegas because she couldn't stay in the home that he passed away in. So we moved to Vegas. And I said, okay, I got to start my single, which was Player Hater. I have to start, I have to put out my single. I haven't put out music in a while and I got to get to it. So I started, when I when we got to Vegas and got settled in, I started working on my single and I was able to release that one last year, so I, I really didn't release any music during COVID. It was just like a standstill, but I think it bought an aha moment for me that life is short, and I need to um, really focus on my art and take it even more serious. It's like I always took it seriously, but since I'm kind of an out-of-the-box singer and artist, at times it felt like, okay, well, where do I belong But I think during that moment of not having to deal with the L.A. traffic and all that, it just put things in perspective that I have to put my music first. I have to put my art first. So that was kind of all over the place. (laughs) No, you're fine. No, no, that's good. And, you know, COVID was all over the place anyway. So it's uh, it's it's kind of the, the way things are. So who was it that told you, no, you couldn't be a singer? I'm always amazed when I talk to people how many times people hear that and who would stunt that in somebody? I, 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 I'm baffled by it. Yeah, it was actually my stepdad, rest in peace. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I was 14, and, you know, I I call myself a God-given singer, you know, so when I started doing music, I didn't think about competition or, um, you know, uh, and I couldn't make it, you know, because I had that childlike imagination but then when he told me that at 14 and said there's so many singers out there what makes you think you're going to be a singer guess what I did in my subconscious mind I really didn't try a hundred percent like I was like 50 percent and I did that all through my 20s you know and even though I put out stuff I still wasn't at a hundred percent because that subconscious voice in my head said you can't you know you'll never be a singer you can't do that, you know, and so and it's, it's, it's weird because strangers never told me that in my 20s. They might, you know, you might run into one or two people that might say, oh, well, you know, you need to do this style. They just want me to change my style, but they never told me I couldn't do it. 
So it was kind of like that that moment where um, it, like I said, it just they didn't push me to go 100 percent, and now I'm like getting over the trauma at you know 33 years old. Um, well, really, I started getting over it at like 30, 30 years old, and now I'm like I'm gonna just do my thing, and I can still do this as an independent artist. But since he wasn't in the field, he didn't know about independent artists. He didn't know about any of that. Like, he thought everybody thinks if you're not Beyonce or you're not Christina Aguilera, well, you're not a singer. You can't do it. But that wasn't the case. You can actually make a living as an independent singer. You don't have to be with the Columbia Records and all those people. (laughs) Well, you know, and all of those people had to work just as hard as you do or anybody else does Mm -hmm. to get where they're at. And, And as you know, I mean, half of this, I mean, it's talent, but it's also how things just kind of unfold and develop. You know, you just don't know. I mean, these people yeah. weren't destined from the word go. It didn't happen the minute they, they hopped on stage. It took a t- I mean, it took time for Ella Fitzgerald to get to that point. You know, she was probably, mm-hmm. I think she was singing for a while until she went to the Apollo, and she was just discovered, and there you go. It was the original American Idol. So Yeah, definitely not negating their work, but... If someone, you know, is not with a label and just doing music, it doesn't mean they can't be considered successful. So and I think that's where it is when people tell someone, well, you can't do music because they don't know there's there's different ways you can do music. So So let's go back to your childhood. Talk to me a little bit about where you were born and raised and how you got this artistic spirit in you. Well, I was I was born in Middletown, Connecticut and um I was raised in uh, Newport News, Virginia, and, you know, I don't really, middle of town Connecticut was kind of like a blur because I was a little kid. <laughs> when we moved to Virginia was when I started getting into um, music and stuff because my mother was in um, nursing school and she had me in different daycares. And so I, to me, to fit in, I just started, I said, well, let me just remember, memorize songs so I can look cool and start just singing. And Back then, it was Kelly Price for me and Aaliyah and D'Angelo and just all these other singers that I would just sing. Even I would even rap. And so I would sing and um, just to get, just to like get some friends and stuff. And I actually started getting friends that way because I was otherwise awkward. You know, I was always socially awkward when I was a kid. But when I started singing, they wanted to hang around me. So then I said, um, and at that time I said, I'm just going to, I thought I was going to be a basketball player. Cause at that point, at that time I was taller than everybody. And evidently I'm not definitely not tall now, but I was taller than everybody. So I said, I, I'm going to be a basketball player. I didn't think about, oh, I'm going to be a singer. I just knew I had a talent. And then, and so I was in Virginia when I was going through all the daycare and stuff, as I got older, I was like, okay, I want to, I want to, I think I want to pursue music. I said, I I think I'm meant to do that. I realized basketball was not for me. I was like, I don't want to do basketball. So I started the process of um, trying to figure out how to be a singer. You know, I said, well, I guess I have to be with a label. That was the first thing I thought. I have to try to find a record deal or something. And I didn't even know how to do that. But um, like I said, I didn't go 100%. So I didn't get with a label. And then also some labels that did contact me, they wanted me to be Rihanna or they wanted me to be somebody I wasn't. So then I said, I don't, I didn't want to be somebody I wasn't because I read in Russell Simmons book, do you, that they were your famous, your the artists you love are in the mirror at night, um, crying at night to themselves because they're singing music. They didn't really want to sing. And I don't want to, I didn't want to be like that, you know? So I said, okay, well, let me, let me just keep going. And that's what I did. But my first, but then, but, but backwards, let me go back. But then um, when I was in middle school, there was a performing arts high school called Woodside School of Performing Arts. And I said, you know, okay, well, Tupac and all these other people, they went to performing arts high school. So I have to go to performing arts high school. I have to get in. I wasn't somebody good with grades. I just was an average student. So I was worried that I wasn't going to get in. I was able to get in. And that helped me hone my craft because I was in advanced choir for four years and advanced drama for four years. So I was able to really hone my craft and get my voice stronger to finding my voice. After that, it was kind of like, like I said, after that one omen that was spoken on, you know, spoken to me when I was 14 saying I couldn't get there, I really didn't go like 100% after I left Woodside School of Performing Arts, High School of Performing Arts. You know, I kind of just went 50% and then you had, and then on top of that, I had other, you know, uh, major, I guess you could say other people that just wasn't used to my style of music. I was kind of unorthodox for 1920. I remember 
you know, the rep from Bad Boy wrote me on MySpace back when MySpace was the thing saying, man, I don't understand why everybody likes you. You're so unorthodox, you know. And um, I was like, well, that's just maybe people want to hear something different. Maybe we maybe we thought, you know, because I, I was 19, 20, and I like different music. So maybe other young people wanted to hear different music at the time. So um, I just kept on that journey, and um, I went to the r and of Atlanta. Um, I got duped with my money. That didn't work out. So then after that, I went to a situation where I was just, really depressed and down about it because I was like, man, I was supposed to at least try to get in through audio production. So after that, I, I did all these odd jobs. I worked on Carnival Cruise Lines. I started singing on there. Um, so I was singing on the Sensation, and I was doing, like, karaoke music and stuff like that, hosting events. And then I said, this isn't me neither. I, I think I got on there just to prove I could be a singer independently somehow, but I didn't want to be on a boat. I didn't like being on a boat. I got off the boat at 23 or 24 around that age. And after that, it was just kind of like this journey of figuring out, okay, what do I do now? Um, I need money to do the music. I need, you know, income to build a studio. And I just started getting into tech, and that's when tech came along. And tech became my record deal, I should say, because once I got into tech at 26, 20, 26 27, I started to um, be able to afford a, a home studio, move to L.A., network learn more about acting because I was always in the music because everybody used to tell me focus on one thing but focusing on one thing it didn't get me I needed to have extra money as well like you sometimes you just can't focus on one thing so that's when I got into tech and tech was able to help me get the funds I needed to be able to court player hater all by myself in my own studio and get an engineer to edit it and that was the first song I've done I did by myself without anybody around and it was so terrifying because you know, you don't have anyone around to say, okay, sing this way or do this or, you know, like a, I don't know, it was, just, it was sort of terrifying, but it was also exhilarating at the same time because it's like, well, this is my art anyway. I'm not with a label that, tell, you know, says, okay, you got to do it this way or that way. You're kind of just letting it out and seeing what your fans say and it, and it actually is one of my, one of the best songs I have to this day, <laughs> which is interesting. Well, if someone was to ask you, of all of these things that you do and who you are, someone wanted to know what you do and you had to give them a synopsis. How would you describe oh, what your job is and what you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And that's the crazy thing. You know, I was just reading about this earlier. But how to explain when you're multi-hyphenate? Um, I just call, you know what I call myself now? I call myself a multi-hyphenate individual because I can't say, you know, the whole sl- the whole story, master of, of all and what is it master of all and jack of all trades and master of none i think that i'm a master of one and a good at the rest so i got into you know i felt like i mastered music the most because i've done i did it my whole life until i was like 26 you know and then everything else the tech and everything is it's almost like it's intertwining with the music to be honest with you because it gives you that logical side and then you have the art side and it kind of helps you be able to express things differently. But I would say I'm a multi-hyphen uh, individual where I'm, I'm an artist, you know, abstract soul singer, technologist, you know, um, author, and a writer. That's how I look at myself, <laughs> you know, so, just to sum it up. Yeah, I, I dig it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm a busybody myself, so I understand. So what what motivates you? Every day you wake up, you have the opportunity to dabble in a lot of things. But what is it ultimately? What's the overriding factor that makes you motivated every day to do what you do? Man, good question. I think freedom and freedom and in, in not just um, getting out of a regular job, which I eventually want to do, but freedom and just being able to um, put out what I want. You know, um, like I don't need permission because I can figure this out and I can I can release a book tomorrow on Amazon if I want. I can it just kind of wakes me up to know I have that these stories to tell because I have so many stories to tell and um, and also have my own recording studio. Now it's even more, you know, optimized because I added some more stuff. It just makes me excited to get up. And even though in the morning I'm like, man, I want to get up and just do music all day or, or right. I still feel like, okay, well, at least I, at least I have a point now where I can, you know, do this when I want to do it. Whereas before I couldn't do anything, you know, 
So I think that's what wakes me up in the morning is just the the, the freedom that's coming with all this, you know, because eventually, you know, I will be doing my art full time and enjoying enjoying myself and, and meeting other artists and having time to just enjoy the art. So that's what I'm excited about. That's what motivates me. And um, also just helping my mom, being able to help her so she can um, retire young and live the rest of her life because she did so much for me. So I want to repay that to her. So as a musician, what what album, what was the first album you listened to that really just like blew you away, opened your mind up and made you think not only you love music, but maybe motivated you to want to do the same thing? Oh, man, you know, oh, oh man, that's a good question. But you know what? It's weird because, you, you know, I would expect myself to say Ali or someone because I used to love Aliyah, but it was D'Angelo because it was kind of like when I heard his first album, Voodoo, I think it was called Voodoo. I'm just, I was like, this is so different. It's spicy. It's not normal. And I've always, you know, back then you don't know what's not, you know, back then I didn't know what was out of the box or not, but when I was like nine or probably nine or 10, I listened to, I don't even know when D'Angelo's album first came out, but I was a young girl. And I said, wow, you know, I want to do music. This is, this is so different. And, um, it, it just, the songs, all his songs just stood out. It was just original. It was fresh. It came from the soul. And, um, and then I got into Nina Simone and, I, I really fell in love with music, and I can't even remember the, the the album with "I Put a Spell on You." That was my favorite album by Nina Simone, and I kind of just I was like, "Wow, okay, I'm really resonating with her style. She's she's gritty. She's she's talking about the times, yet she's talking about love. I mean, she was just so. It just made me like, okay, I fit in here, you know. And sometimes I thought before my time, like, did I belong there in the time? That, you know, um, kind of like records time, me at a James and all them. Cause my voice was always so just soulful and straight to the point. And so I was like, well, you know, but when I heard Nina Simone and I heard, um, and then when, you know, more modernized D'Angelo, I said, you know what, I can fit into, I, I got to do music. This is my calling. And that's when I just kept, I kept going and said, I have to do this. So. What about heroes or role models? You know, we're only as good, I think, sometimes as those we look up to and aspire to. Who would those be or who would that be in your life? Oh, man. Um, I guess <laughs> celebrity-wise, oh, man, there's so many. Um, <laughs> I guess, well, my role model right now that's alive, I should say. I guess I'm going to say alive. Um, but even though... Maya Angelou was my role model before she passed away. Rest in peace. I I really liked her sense of of being, her sense of curiosity when I wrote her read her first book, and you know when she talked about um a, a, what was it a songbird I forgot what the book was called um but I was so impressed with her like grit and her like um I guess you say her confidence to keep going despite all she's been through and then all the wisdom that she has, it was just amazing. And I learned from her on when I didn't finish my first college, I was like, I felt incompetent. But when she said in that book, um, that the first book I read, when she said that she started reading and getting curious and, and becoming educated on her own, I started reading and educating myself. And I was able to speak in any room after just, you know, reading her book and, and, um, you know, it just inspired me to know that you can change your mind. You can do anything you want to do, you know, just just having that wisdom. So I would say Maya Angelou and Alive. Oh, man, Alive. Um, okay, music-wise, I like Beyonce because of her work. Her, her work ethic is out of this world. Like, it's amazing. And um, I like how she... She tries to do different things, even though it may some people may disagree with it. But I like how her work ethic is and her business acumen is. So that's amazing to me. So I really admire her on that. And it's just it's some more like I like Viola Davis because I like her strength and her story is how she got into acting and stuff. It's kind of all over the place like me and and the, all the disappointment she had and stuff is like looking at her now speak you know, about, you know, um, getting equal pay as far as, you know, black women in, in Hollywood and, and being strong enough to stand in the room and do the, and, and, and talk about these things. 
I mean, gosh, she's she's just amazing to me. <laughs> the, the you know, um, I definitely like like listening to her and stuff. And I'm actually about to read her book that she has out, but I love listening to her because it motivates me to speak up and and stand up for what I believe in in all as you know areas in my life. So yeah, those are my role models right now. But I have I have a lot of them. But I'm just gonna say those. <laughs> So I don't want to assume anything here on this next question, but tell me who, anybody alive on the planet right now, who would you like to meet and talk to? Oh, man. Um, you know what? I would like to talk to Will Smith. I know it's, <laughs> I know he just smacked Chris Rock, but I would love to talk to Will Smith because I like how he, I like how he looks at things, you know, and I know he's human. We're all, you know, he, everyone has different issues, but I like how, he looks at things like just watching him and, and when he mentioned he read The Alchemist and he was the start of me changing my life, actually, because when I read The Alchemist, I was 20 years old and it was about, you know, a young young boy and he's finding his treasure in life, like he's going after his purpose. And um, I thought it was amazing. There were so many great quotes in there. And he he mentioned it because he was talking about how he's how he navigates through the universe and how he attracts things just by. Um, saying certain things or doing the work and, and how he didn't let anybody push him to plan B. He kept plan A and listening to his book made it more fruitful because I just, I'm still working on his book, but I already finished half of it, but his journey was also different. You know, a lot of his family also didn't agree with his music career, but the fact that he kept going a hundred percent regardless, that's something I wish I had at 20 and he had it, you know, despite, even other rappers saying he's an odd rapper. You don't cuss in your raps. What are you doing? He still kept going, and now it's amazing to me. So I would want to sit down with Will Smith and ask him questions. <laughs> if you have a dream tonight and you run into your younger version of yourself, and you could, like, you know, maybe early 20s and right when you're really getting out there and trying to get after it, and you could tell your younger version one piece of advice based on the wisdom that you've accumulated over the years, what would you tell your younger version? I would tell my younger version to keep going and don't give up and go 100%. Don't coward out. Be confident. Stand on your toes and and look people in the eye and do it anyway. That's what I would tell myself, <laughs> younger me. Cool. What's been the best fan letter, fan response that you've gotten from whether it's your music or your podcast or anything mm-hmm. creatively that you've done that stands out that you always remember oh man so for music i remember i had a really i had a really um i had a really good fa- i had a really good fan and i think that fan's still around somewhere i don't you know but he would write like when i did my first album limitless he would write a like a paragraph on what he felt about each song and I found out, I found, I found that to be amazing. Like it was so detailed about what he felt about each song. And I've never met this guy before. He found me on Reverb Nation and I literally cried in my car. Like, because I, you know, when you put out your art, it's like a baby, you know, it's like a little baby that you want to protect. And the fact that someone took their time to write a paragraph about each song and what it made them feel and, what they felt about the song, that was amazing. I just felt, I just felt like it was, I'm supposed to be doing this. And I was 20, 23, 24 when I put out my first album. And I said, I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm going to resonate with someone, even if someone thinks this, this album is out of the box or not normal. Um, because you know, when the African American community, if you're not singing like you're in the church or you're not R and B, you're kind of like shunned away but but what artists what artists should understand now is you are the change you want to see. It starts with us, you know, and the confidence that we that we have to still push this music out. And the fact that this person took their time to do that, I I I just knew it was a good album. I felt very good about it. What is it about? You know, it seems like you know, the modern advent of podcasting affords us to kind of have, a, have an extra level of understanding and maybe even empathy. What do you enjoy the most about the process of getting able to talk to somebody, get to know them and present that, the story to an audience? Wow. You know what? I, I like the fact that um, 
I like the fact that it's like it's kind of exhilarating in a way because you you learn about their journey and it there I like the vulnerability of it because it's like sometimes the conversation turns like I might say something and they're like oh man you just I never said this anywhere else or they might say I never said this to another podcast you just bought it out of me and I'm like oh okay and that makes me feel like oh I'm I'm bringing something out of this person that can also help my audience. And and I've even had one, um, I have one fan that wrote me one time and said, I did an interview on David Combs and his career and how he got into music. And he had a different start. He started later on in life. And I had someone write me and say, man, this was the best episode ever. This really helped me in my life. It really helped me, um, you know, inspired me to try things in different ways and to, like, he was just so inspired by David. And I thought that was, like, like fulfilling, like, okay, I'm meant to do this. And, and I do my podcast, just like my music, kind of unorthodox, like it goes in everything I do. It's kind of weird how, you know, it, everything just goes with each other in a weird way, because I'm the same way with my podcast. I'm like, you know, so it's, it's sort of cool that it can flow in a direction that I think is needed for not only me, the guest, but also the author. That's the whole reason why I did this, you know, started this, because Plus, I have so many different things to talk about, so it's just so cool. I have different people coming from different backgrounds and different topics. It's, it's just amazing. It almost seems like a modern version of therapy. The more I think about it and kind of hone in on it, it's like people like to, to, like, people like to talk about themselves. They want to get their stories out. And by proxy, people love to hear stories. I mean, it's like – and then you, you get to understand all of these different walks of life and what is therapy. Therapy is getting – to a point where you're understanding and healing. And it almost seems like that's kind of a part of this process. Um, of yeah. So, you know, it's, and you know, so is art. I mean, I think um, art is, is another way of being therapeutic for people, whether you're singing or writing or painting or whatever you're doing. I think there's a level of understanding that you come to that, that gets it out in ways that are healthier than, let's say, road rage or something like that. It's yeah, like, that is so true. <laughs> You know, that is just so a, true. It's a more convenient way. So my question now with the, the world opening up, which I think we're probably all still in shock that, you know, things have been opening up. I remember seeing a headline Biden like a month and a half below his uh, his ticker down below. It said he announces the pandemic is over, which immediately frightened me because every time we say it's good, a variant comes out. Something inevitably becomes mm. a, another part of this. But I think right now with the world opening up, the weather's warm and people are touring, you know, music acts, all kinds of things are going on. If we talk in five years from now, do you feel like there's an, an, an extra level of urgency in you that you have projects in the hopper that you're going to look forward to getting complete? Say we do talk in five years and I'm like, hey, what's up? What have you been doing? Um, what, what, would you, what would you look forward to? That is an awesome question because <laughs> – I was just thinking yesterday that I felt like the universe was telling me to push out my projects at max speed. And I said, well, why, you know, and my, I just felt like God was telling me you have to do this. And because I just started seeing a lot change, like the energy of the world, you know, I'm, I'm kind of like, I could feel things basically in some odd way, but I, the energy of the world is changing. And I just feel like eventually, I don't think, I don't think it's going to be a lot of opportunities to perform, you know, and I never was a performer, but if I chose to, I don't think it's going to be, it's, I just think that, I think it's going to be more strands and it's going to be, it's going to get worse because there's something called long-term COVID and I'm, I'm already affected by it. My mother is, and you know, it's, it's just a lot going on with that. So it slows us down. You know, some people don't even know they have it, but I'm just in tune with my body. So I know when something's off, I'm like, no, nah, this is not how it used to be. I know that I'm affected by this. So it kind of makes me say, okay, let me get these projects out here. Let me submit my songs to these movies. Let me be 100%. And I started saying I'll be 100% a month ago. And gosh, everything, I'm starting to get reciprocity for it. Like getting responses, I'm getting, because I went 100%. And it was just, and that's because, I felt like my intuition is telling me something's going to change in five years. It's not going to be the same, you know, and I have to put these projects out, you know, I have to get these out and I just don't want to be just sitting on stuff. And, and that's why right now everything that's supposed to be out is out and I'm working on more music, 
you know, and I'm this time doing it my way because I'm not going to be so stressed out about at this point I'm doing music for the people that it resonates with. So um, I feel like at this point, yeah, I definitely am pushing it out because I feel there's going to be a change in five years. It's going to be, it's just going to be um, more, it's just going to be a big change. I can't figure out, I don't know exactly what it is, but I feel it. And that's why I'm like, let me put these songs, let me get this stuff out and, and just, they, you know, not to, because when you tell people you have different projects going on, sometimes they, they may not mean any harm, but they could be like, oh, you're doing too much, but you're really not, you know, because most of my projects I've done, I already, they're already done. I did it when I was like 21 when I didn't have money for studio time. So all these, these books and everything I have, they already were written. I'm just rebranding it now because I have more income to say, okay, let me, let me go here to this event and talk about a book now. Like now I have that leverage, whereas before I didn't. So now I'm I'm just putting everything out now, and it just looks like to someone that doesn't know me. Oh my gosh, she's nope. All these things, you know, have been done. I'm just doing what God's telling me to do because something is changing, and it's changing within me too. So I just want to be ready for that and have everything already out there, you know, for when whatever is coming comes. <laughs> you know, it sounds kooky, but it's just it's it's just what I feel. You know. No, I dig it. Yeah. Um... So everyone has a perception of you, an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, colleagues, fans, but ultimately you live your life. You have a perception of who you think you are. So who do you think you are? Oh, man. I think, you know what, I think that I'm just a creative, intuitive person. So I I just feel like I don't want fame or nothing like that, like people thought I did. I just want to do my work and do it full time and enjoy it. Um and and rather that's music, entrepreneurship, my books, and my podcast, that's all I want to do. I just want I want the simple things. I want to do well enough to um help my mother out and to travel the world to see and meet different people because I learned a lot working on that boat that a, a lot of other countries that I just didn't know. So I just want to travel. I want to just live. I just want to be, just want to enjoy my days because life is short, man. And it, I, it's just fleeting. So I just want to have a good time and in the way that, that matters to me. I don't need to go. I don't even need to go out to have a good time. I can stay with a cup of tea and just write, or I can watch a good movie and then, you know, and so can, you know, I can just watch a movie. I can watch a show. I just, I'm just a simple woman. And I think people think that I just want to get, be all over TV and stuff. I I don't mind. I like acting and stuff. If if that comes with it, I can't do anything about that. But I am a you know I like to stay to myself and and just chill because I I just I'm just a chill person. So that's 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 me. You know that's that's my personality. Cool. So if anyone wants to learn more about you, your podcast, your music, what you do, where can they go? How can they find this out? Oh yeah, they can go to sequoiablue.com. Um, so I just got a new website, so um, I'm going to add all my books on there. And, um, yeah, so they can go to SequoiaBlue.com. I got my podcast on there. Everything's on there. So, yeah, they can check that out. And they can go to BlueAlchemistPodcast.com if they want to. If they just want to go straight to the podcast, that's fine. I think the main thing is is that if you have a dream of what you want your life to be, then that's whatever whatever you have to do to get to that point, that's the bottom line. Yes, thank you. I love this. Thank you so much. You definitely understood my journey, and I appreciate you listening and letting me share it. It's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Good luck with everything. Awesome sauce. All right, good luck with everything for you, too. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino. We'll be covering the world of art, literature, and music around the globe. If you want to hear more interviews, visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and until next time.